the Samoon S1. I'm going to be giving this brother out to And today we're going to be scanning this, the Ryan Hopper. Now you've probably seen this in videos before. And if you have, you'll know that it's a challenging scan. Believe it or believe it not. With all its various uh, bits of geometry. So, if you want to see how I get on today with the Samoon S1 and the Ryan Hopper, stick around and I'll show you. Hello, I'm Charlie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be scanning this, the Ryan Hopper. Now to look at it, you might think, that's just a simple scan that is, it's only a box. But it's not, it's quite challenging. It's got a nice little bore there. But what makes it even more challenging is the fact that it's only got a couple mil wall thickness. And it's got an inside and an outside. You obviously got to do a global marker scan first, where herein lies the first problem. Is basically getting the global markers from the outside to meet the inside. And as you can see, what you do is you put the markers on the edge so that when the scanner comes over the top, it can see the inside and it can see the outside at the same time. Now, with a scanner with a shallow depth of field, this is impossible to do. With a scanner like the Samoon S1, which has got a brilliant depth of field, it's relatively easy. So, I'm going to start off with it like that. I'm going to do a global marker scan all the way around. And this time I'm going to scan it all in parallel lines. And then I'm going to use the single line to get into those little nooks and crannies. Especially around places like that. That's a little bit of a challenge that is for scanners. Just to get into those little nooks and crannies. So, I'll just set up for a global marker. And we'll see how we get on. Now I shall do this in real time just to demonstrate the speed of this. As you can see I just come round the corner there ever so easily. Now I'm on the back. The back edge. Back round to the front. Now if I lift it up. See I've got those on the back edge already. And on the back edge there. It's just so easy. It's just unbelievable. And right over the top, and I got them in the base. Just keep going all the way around. And then if I just tip it up on its end, don't even have to stop the scan, look. I don't have to stop the scan because none of my markers are on the turntable. All of my markers are on the, uh, on the rain hopper itself. So, I'm not going to like move any markers that shouldn't be moved. So I'll just flip it upside down again there now. And just come round there now just to gather those last few. And just make sure that I've got them all in. 121 markers and it's scanned that at 90 frames a second. I'm reasonably happy now then that we've got all the markers in there so we'll just stop it. We'll go to Pawn Cloud. I'm going to go to parallel lines and I'm going to come down to point three. Preview and let's start. Now as you can see, I mean this just blows me away every time. It's just straight in. The secret with these parallel lines is to go nice and slow. And it just builds it up with blue more or less straight away. It's just awesome the way it does it. Just making sure I build it up with blue. Now just under that lip there, if I turn it that way, just to get under that lip, and can you see the way it's just filling that lip in? Back down to upright. Let's come around this side. Again, it's going blue really quick. Come to the side, just to make sure I've got that lip in. Come around to the back. And just build this up. Okay, let me speed this up now then and I'll bring you back 
when I get to some nice interesting bits. Now I've gone all the way around the, uh, the outside. I'm now going to go over to the top. And as you can see, it suddenly starts bringing that back wall in. Look at that, brilliant. And it's doing that because the global markers go to the inside as well. Now it's not building that up as quick, because if you look at this now, this, this, this lens has got to see it as well. So if I bring it down, just bear in mind, if I bring it down now, we can't see it. If you drew a direct line from there to the the back wall, which you're trying to scan, this is in the way, so we can't see it. So a little tip there is to turn it this way, where both of them can see it. And then you can get in, or hold it up higher. Now to get that corner in there now, if you look what I'm doing with the scanner, I'm bringing it almost into the hopper. So I'm making sure that both lenses can see that corner. And that it's a good distance. Again, doing it again the same, nice and steady and slow. And then we'll bring our way around here. Take our way up to that corner. And again, bringing it almost into the middle of the, uh, the hopper to get that corner there. Nice and steady there with those parallel lines. Getting it nice and blue in the corner. Come around to this corner. And again, Nice and steady till we get it blue. And then right above it to get the base in. Just going to stop it now then and have a look where we are. So as you can see it's coming up a tree, this is. I've still got the bottom to do yet. But what am I missing at the top here? Look at these gaps here in this. All down that little edge there. And that little edge there. Those are the bits that I'm missing. Even though I've been over that a couple of times. I need the single line to get into that. Well. So, let's go to single line and let's resume the scan. Now, you can zoom in on this. So if I zoom in to a nice amount, you can see where that single line is going. And if I come up and down there nice and slow now, just look how it's filling it in. Takes a little bit of extra time, but look at the extra detail you're getting. Come round the other side. Look at that. I haven't actually gone any closer than it was just the zoom. Just getting it in there, see? Nice and slow. Okay, so that's all done. Now this one. Look at that. Just coming into that side now then again, zoom in, now it's too close then and you can tell when you're too close because you can't see the laser line on the item, come back out to good and you can see the laser line on the item, 
and then as you go up and down then it starts to fill it in look at that brilliant now I'm going to come round to the inside edges just in that edge there over to that edge and into the bottom see if I can start to get into that uh, into that bore and into these edges here pause it so let's finish that scan there Take out this bit here, and I'm going to take the bottom off that. So I've got a nice clean hole. Now I've got two options now. I can either do another scan and then join them together, or flip it over and continue. And the reason I can flip it over and continue is because, as I said before, none of the markers are on the turntable. All of the markers are actually on the hopper itself. So I'm not going to be affecting anything. If there were some markers as well on the turntable, I couldn't obviously flip it over. Because it would just mess up the global marker scan. But on this occasion, I can flip it over. So, let's flip it over. Let's put something underneath it just for ease. Just to hold the surface up off the turntable so then I can uh, I can come into that edge. Let's go to continue scanning. Continue scanning. Parallel lines. And start. Now I can just continue around nice and steady getting on with the scan. I'm just doing the top now because I cut I cut the end off, didn't I? If you remember, so I'm just building that end up again. So what I'm concentrating on here, I think, is the outside, the outside and the very top. The bore I'll do in a minute with the uh, the single line. Turn on single line, and the first one I think I want to do with single line is the top of these here. You see how that's not quite done on the top. Or should I say the bottoms and there there's just a little bit there see move out to this one and as you can see the tops And then that little lip there. Just that tiny little lip. And just how good is this scanner? See? Now, pause it again now. Take out my item from underneath it that's holding it. Because what I want to do now is I want to do this bore. Just straighten that bore now. So I'll go all the way in. And all the way around and as you can see it's just picking it up that looks pretty good let's fuse it let's do a standard fuse at point three which is what I scanned it at look at that look at that I don't need to do anything else with that
I feel awesome. Okay, let's jump to meshing. Let's give it five million. Meshed perfectly. Okay, let's uh, let's export the model then. And here we are, opened up in Mesh Mixer. Now this has just been fused and meshed. And the software has automatically taken the markers off it. Just look at that. Absolutely fantastic. Couple of little places there, look where it's missed. Those little blue, but wow. Now you look at that hole, the first time I saw that hole, I thought to myself, that hole's never never done right, that hole should be round. But if we have a look at the uh, the hopper itself, as you can see, it's not round. The same the other side. You can just see where one of the markers was there, look. But wow, look at that. Couple little holes there, maybe. Look at that for detail. It's fantastic. And that's a single line that's done that. Under that edge there. Look at the detail there with that. And then the boss on the end. Look at how sharp those are. What a brilliant, brilliant scan. Okay, let's look at the inside. Those edges are sharp. Both sides. And the first time I saw this, I thought to myself, it hasn't removed those very well. But, as you can see, those are marks in the plastic. So look at this edge. Missed a little bit there, but wow. The Samoon S1, the hopper. It was not a challenge, was it, really, for this? Dead is alive. I hope you've liked this video. If you do, please press the like button and subscribe, because there is going to be more stuff to come. I'm going to, work, I'm going to go off now and see if I can find something that's going to give this a proper challenge, because everything at the moment, it's just, it's just been a walk in the park for it. It's brilliant. Until the next time, thanks for watching.